It was a warm summer day in Neshoba County, Mississippi in June 1964. Three college students arrived to investigate a church fire bombing. It was about to become red hot. James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwerner were recruited along with hundreds of black and white volunteers to register voters, develop schools, and secure better health care in Mississippi. The project was known as Freedom Summer. Andrew Goodman was born on the Upper East Side of Manhattan to Jewish parents Robert and Carolyn Goodman. The Goodman family was heavily involved in socially progressive activism. It was a path Andrew followed when he attended Queens College. He joined the Congress of Racial Equality, otherwise known as CORE, during his junior year. While I was in my first year at Queens, uh, Barbara Jones put an article in the Phoenix looking for volunteers to go to Mississippi. I was intrigued by the idea of doing that. Started to uh, attend meetings. Andy Goodman and I were the guys who were the most consistent in going to the different meetings, continuing to learn about the project and continuing to say we were ready to go. African-American James Cheney was of the Catholic faith born in Meridian, Mississippi, the eldest son of Fanny and Ben Cheney. As a teenager, James took a strong interest in the civil rights movement, often talking with his mother about getting involved. Later on, he organized voter education classes, helping core members with introductions to local church leaders and escorting them around Mississippi counties. He and my moms would talk a lot and he would share what he was interested in doing. She never forbade it, but she would always end their conversation with, boy, you know you can get killed by what you're doing. And he would chuckle and laugh and say, yeah, I know, I know. Affectionately known as Mickey, Michael Schwerner was born to Jewish parents, Anne and Nathan, in Pelham, New York. His brother, Stephen Schwerner, was director of counseling at Queens College and chaired the Academic Senate. Mickey Schwerner studied sociology at Cornell University and later began graduate studies at the School of Social Work at Columbia University. In the early 1960s, he led a local core group in downtown Manhattan. All four of us, my wife and I and, and Mickey and Rita, joined a, a chapter of core called Downtown Core. We were all involved in demonstrations in the civil rights movement. He was much braver than I was, and he would lie down in front of bulldozers. Cheney, Goodman, and Schwerner went to a core training session in Ohio in 1964. Hundreds of core members were educated on how to navigate the racism they would encounter in Mississippi during Freedom Summer. One of the freedom schools within a black church in Neshoba County, organized by Mickey Schwerner, was burned down. The three activists left for Mississippi on June 20th to investigate. On June 21st, just one day after arriving, the three students were jailed, released, then kidnapped, and brutally murdered by local Ku Klux Klan members. An extensive search was initiated. After 44 days, their bodies were found. The magnitude and the intensity and the quality of the grief on Carolyn and Robert Goodman's face when I went in to see them is something I will never forget. In the course of looking for the three boys, they had come across four or five other bodies, young black boys. I said to Dr. King, the Klan has no soul. How much quantity and quality of hate must it take for you to just direct your anger at three boys? The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King aided in the quest to bring the murderers to justice speaking out on multiple occasions and consoling the bereaved families. I'm at home with my mother and father's doorbell rings and I open the door 
And um, there's Dr. King. We sat around the kitchen table uh, and talked for an hour and a half. He was very gracious. He did everything he could. It was important these murders be kept in, in public view so that people would know how folks were treated in Mississippi and as a generalization through a lot of the rest of the South. Dr. King visited Queens College's Colden Auditorium on May 13, 1965, for the inaugural President John F. Kennedy Lecture Series. I certainly stand here under the inspiration of the fact that it was Queens College that gave to America and indeed to the world Andy Goodman, whose creative witness will certainly live for generations yet unborn. He, along with others, paid the supreme price uh, for this struggle, and I'm sure that we will see in many ways that his death was not in vain. It was a long, arduous struggle to bring those responsible to justice. Forty-one years later, one perpetrator of the murder Edgar Ray Killen was sentenced to 60 years for manslaughter. He died in prison. The murders of one African-American male and two white men shined a glaring spotlight on the horrors of long-standing racism and helped usher in the federal 1964 Civil Rights Act. This historic legislation prohibited discrimination in public places provided for the integration of schools and other public facilities, and made employment discrimination illegal. So the Andrew Goodman Foundation was created in 1966 to carry on the purpose and spirit of Andrew's life. The foundation organized the Vote Everywhere Campaign, a national nonpartisan civic engagement movement of student leaders and university partners. The program provides extensive training and a peer network to support Andrew Goodman ambassadors. They work to register voters, bring down voting barriers, and tackle social justice issues on their respective campuses. The mission of the foundation is making young voices and votes a powerful force in democracy. So we educate our students, organize them to get out the vote, and if they find, they usually do, impediments to voting, they advocate to change it. And in the rare instances where the Board of Elections are just refusing and trying to bully students, we'll sue them. At Queens College, students with an exemplary record of community service are selected to serve. Emmanuel Avila coordinates the program. The experience allows a student to go out there and inform the campus community and the community at large about registering to vote and why voting is important. It also speaks about civic engagement and service learning, given the opportunity to enhance the model of the institution, which is we learn so that we may serve. The information they provide to the campus community and the community at large is pivotal to what we need to help enhance leadership in society overall. Hearing about the legacy of Andrew Goodman and knowing that I had an opportunity to be a part of something like that, um, that, that was the main motivator because I knew that I could have an impact in a real way. Making sure that we use our voice for those that don't feel like they have a voice or to inspire them to stand in their own power and use their voice. Our institutions mean a lot to me. Our democracy means a lot to me. And as we've seen, those institutions aren't as strong as they used to be. Uh, and so we need to realize that the work that Cheney, Goodman, and Schwarner, Dr. King, and all of the amazing civil rights leaders that existed, the work is unfinished. We have progress to make. With voting, you definitely can make an impact. There's still ongoing voter discrimination. There are a lot of communities that may not have access to polling sites or may not know the correct information of voting, I want to make sure that, you know, everyone is aware of their right to vote. Voting is a right that I think young people in our generation don't unfortunately exercise. Andrew Goodman sacrificed so we could have 
the rights that we have. June 21st, 2024, marks 60 years since the tragic murders and Freedom Summer. What lessons can we learn going forward? The best way after 60 years to honor the legacy of Goodman, Cheney, and Swerner, you honor them with the power of love, not the power of violence. You honor them with a commitment to the pursuit of excellence. My brother said, I want to do something about it. And we're seeing an uptick in 18 to 29 year olds interest in public policy that impacts them. They want to have an impact. And in order to have an impact, you've got to vote. Democracy is not guaranteed and we've got to work over the long haul. It really comes down to ensuring that we're not just doing the work that is necessary in the moment, but the work that is sustainable and will last a lifetime. We need to do some important, meaningful, uh, and impactful work. When I think about everything that has been done for me to be in this seat today, I can't sit still. That's why I'm hoping that my generation is galvanized to make something happen in a real way, in a meaningful way. We face ourselves and we say, okay, we know we're hurting, we know we're in pain. What are we going to do about it? When are we going to make the change? The bells of the Cheney Goodman Schwerner Clock Tower of Queens College's Benjamin S. Rosenthal Library ring every hour in honor of the fallen heroes. The clock tower was dedicated in 1989 and the library hosts a civil rights archives. In 2014, President Barack Obama presented the Presidential Medal of Freedom posthumously to James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwerner. On June 21st, 1964, three young men, two white and one black, set out to learn more about the burning of a church in Neshoba County, Mississippi. James Earl Cheney, 21 years old. Andrew Goodman, 20 years old. Michael Henry Schwerner, 24 years old. Young men. And in that Freedom Summer, these three Americans refused to sit on the sidelines. Their brutal murder by a gang of Ku Klux Klan members shook the conscience of our nation. It took 44 days to find their bodies, 41 years to bring the lead perpetrator to justice. And while they're often remembered for how they died, we honor them today for how they lived, with the idealism and the courage of youth. James, Andrew, and Michael could not have known the impact they would have on the civil rights movement or on future generations. And here today, inspired by their sacrifice, we continue to fight for the ideals of equality and justice for which they gave their lives. My mother had passed on, and my father had passed on. And um, we didn't know any um, African Americans that had met a president, except for Martin Luther King. And, um, and it being President Obama, was like um, a double layer of richness because he was a person of color. And um, to receive that honor from him <clears throat> would, um, I think it was just, it was like family. It was like family. Mm -hmm. and, um, and when we um, brought the medals home, we set the medals in the chair that my mother sat in. And we left them there for her. 